What is going on guys, it's your boy Teensy Stars here with another video and today we'll be going through one of the most iconic performances of all time. As you guys know in the NBA we have a ton and I mean tons of performances but not all of them are iconic so today we'll be going through the best iconic performances in NBA history. <laughs> At number 3, we have Game 1 of the 2 on 1 NBA Finals when the big deal was Shaquille O'Neal piled up for 43 points and 18 rebounds. During the NBA Finals, the NBA Pacers were a really good match though compared to the Lakers. But when you have Rick Smith, Jeff Foster, and Dale Davis trying to stop this big man, I'm sorry, but this is literally unfair when you have a 300 pound force posting you up and just dunking on you. The goal for the Lakers were pretty simple. Give Shaq the ball and get out of the way so no one will get hurt. Unless you're the Pacers, of course, because you're literally getting abused in the paint. Blocking every shot in sight, the Pacers were frightened to go to the paint unless they wanted their shot to be sent to the 8th row. Grabbing all the rebounds near reach and slamming it down with authority. Shaq finishes the series with an absurd 38 points, 17 rebounds, and 3 blocks per game to give the Lakers his first championship of their 3 P and his name final MVP. All this being said, this only leads to one conclusion that Shaquille O'Neal is obviously the most dominant force in sports history. At number 2, we have LeBron James' amazing performance in Game 5 of the Eastern Conference Finals against the Detroit Pistons. The Cleveland Cavaliers' back was against the wall once again when they were going against the veteran team in the Detroit Pistons. James has already used almost every ounce of energy put together in one of the most spectacular regular season performances of all time. The series was tied 2-2, and while Game 5 was at Mouse of the Palace, all the odds were in favor of the Pistons, and especially when a young LeBron hasn't yet to prove A, to come clutch when needed, and B, to lead a team when they most needed to do so. But he put all his concerns down the drain when he showed up big time. LeBron couldn't be stopped. If you know LeBron, you can tell that his jump shot is really fairly inconsistent, but when his jump shot is falling and combined with his ability to drive to the rim, he is really unstoppable. He was repeatedly knocking down closely contested mid-range jump shots with ease. And with the game going to double overtime, he continued to drop fadeaway three-pointers and driving to the lane with no problem and scored the Cavaliers 29 of their last 30 points and made an iconic difficult go-ahead layup to win the game after the breathtaking display of talent and gave the Cavaliers a 3-2 lead in the Eastern Conference Finals, the 22-year-old star said he felt terrible, collapsing to his coach's iron and said, I'm banged up, I'm winded, I'm fatigued, he said. I've got all day tomorrow, it's going to be tough to get some rest when you have two-year-olds running around the house, so hopefully I can take to him to one of his grandma's house proving that he gave his all to the game and is willing to do anything to win and lead his team to his first franchise finals. Thus, we move on to number one. We have game five of the 1997 NBA Finals with the Chicago Bulls going against the Utah Jazz, aka the iconic flu game. Going to game seven at 2 a.m. in the morning, Jordan called his personal trainer to his hotel room where he was lying in the fatal position and sweating profusely. He hardly had the strength to sit up in bed and was diagnosed with a stomach virus or food poisoning, likely caused by pizza he ordered the night before. The Bulls trainer told Jordan that there was no way he can play today. Jordan knew the Bulls had a really slim chance of winning, especially when they were going against the Carl Malone MVP and the best passer of all time, John Stockton. But Jordan could have cared less about his trainer's remarks and despite his sickness, Jordan got out of bed at 5 p.m. on Wednesday, just in time for the 7 o'clock tip-off at the Delta Center. The Jazz were up by 16 points during the second quarter, but Jordan slowly began making shots beside his lacking of his usual speed. He scored 17 points in this quarter as the Bulls ended the half with a large run, cutting the Jazz lead to 4. Utah was able to reclaim the lead and stretch it to 8 points. Jordan shot well in the fourth quarter, scoring 15 points with 46.4 seconds left and Chicago down 85-84. He was fouled and went to the free throw line. He made his first to tie the game and missed the second. But Tony Kuko got the rebound, who dribbled back to allow the offense to set up. He passed the ball to Pippen, who was clearly double teamed. 
Pippen passed the ball to now unguarded Michael Jordan, who made a three-point shot to give the Bulls an 88-85 lead with 25 seconds remaining. With only a few seconds left remaining in the game resulting in safely Chicago's favor, Jordan collapsed into Scottie Pippen's arm and creating an iconic image that symbolized the flu game. Thank you guys for watching this video, and as you guys know, if you did enjoy, why don't you leave a like and subscribe if you're new, and I make videos almost like this almost every week, at least once a week, every video, either a mix or just a regular video. So, like it if you enjoyed, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Peace. She's a